Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we are going to go over Git Ignore and README files for source control. So we're continuing with our source control playlist and going a little bit deeper this time. So the first thing I want to go over is what is a Git Ignore file? Well, a Git Ignore file really has a singular purpose and that is to specify the files that you do not want to track in your Git repository. It is important to note that files that have already been tracked by your repository will not be affected by a Git Ignore. Okay, so I created this repository in an earlier tutorial, and when I created it, I did not include a git ignore. So, if I were to create a git ignore for this repository now, and try to block this, uh, or remove this terminal test.txt file, I would not be able to easily because it's already been added to my repository. So it's really important to add your git ignore to your repository really early on in the development process. So that way you don't run into this issue. Now you may be thinking, well, what's a practical example of that? You know, so let's say that you've been working on a project and you've got a file in there that has to store some passwords, right? But you don't want that to be in your repository. Well, you can very easily remove it from your repository by adding in a git ignore file. Now moving on to the next point, I know that uh, I know that the task of choosing which files can be ignored at the beginning of a project's lifecycle can seem really daunting, but it isn't really all that difficult. In fact, there are, are a lot of templates out there that can make your life a lot easier. Now, as I said earlier, when I created this first this repository, I skipped over the option to add a git ignore template, but we're going to go ahead and create another repository now and include a git ignore. So let's go up to our plus button here, new repository, and we're just going to call this ignore test. Whoop, misspelled ignore. Okay. And down here at the bottom it says add dot git ignore. And when you click on that, you can see that there are a whole lot of like just sort of pre-filled templated git ignore files. And since we're a game development channel, I'm just going to type in Unity. And now we're going to include a git ignore file that is specific to Unity. So let's go ahead and create our repository now. And as you can see, we've got an initial commit here with a git ignore file. So let's go ahead and open this up just to see what a git ignore file is comprised of. Now, git ignore files will largely look the same as far as what's in the file. You know, you may have directories um, with slashes and the square brackets and things like that, and then the star file types, but the content of the file will be different. So for this Unity specific one, you can see that we are ignoring the library temp object build and builds directories along with the asset store tools directory. To include a directory in your git ignore, you just have to do slash directory name and then end with another slash. Another impor important point about this is the square brackets. You can see we have these square brackets, capital L, lowercase l. And basically what that does is it covers both the, both the directory with a capital L in library and a lowercase l in library. Now if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that we're also ignoring this VS uh, directory here, which is just a Visual Studio cache directory and then below that we're ignoring a lot of different file types we're, so we are ignoring the CS proj, unity proj, sln, suo, project files and these are really files that we don't necessarily need in our repository so to ignore all files of, with that file extension all we have to do is star dot file extension so as an example if you put star dash cs in your git ignore then it would ignore all c sharp files which is something we really wouldn't want to do for a unity project so all in all git ignore files are pretty easy to create and edit so if i wanted to actually edit this i could just click on this little pencil button here or clone this repository and edit it in a text editor and let's say i just have a custom directory i could just do forward slash custom dir forward slash and now that custom directory will actually be ignored as well. To commit it, I can just very easily scroll down to the bottom. You could put stuff in here, but it's sort of dynamically filling that text. And then I'm just going to commit the changes. Now, as I stated earlier, a git ignore file will not ignore files that were added before it. So I want to show you a quick way to actually fix that. So let's say, again, you have a file with a lot of passwords in it that was added to your repository but now you want to remove it. So to show you that I'm going to go back to my 
home page and let's go to the git tutorial I'm just gonna clone this again now I need to open up iterm and now I'm gonna do a git clone paste in the link and now I'm gonna cd into git uh, what is it dash tutorial okay so now I'm in the right directory if I ls I can see the two files that I have there and now what I actually need to do is add in a dot get ignore file and again it's pretty easy to create one on your own um, so I'm just gonna open up sublime text here and I'm just gonna do uh, we're gonna ignore all dot text files I'm gonna save this I'm gonna save it as a dot get ignore and I'm gonna make sure I'm in the right directory here and save it okay a little warning there just saying dot is reserved for system files but we can go ahead and save it shouldn't affect anything now if I close this out do a git status then you can see that it's trying to add my git ignore right now it's untracked so I can just do a git add dot whoops git add dot I'm gonna git commit dash m whoops there we go and now I can do a git push okay so that has now been pushed up to our remote directory if I refresh here then we'll see that I now have a git ignore file I was added 19 seconds ago so that's looking good but you can see that these files are still in here even though it's this one is a dot text file this one doesn't have an extension but that's okay so like I said earlier it's not removing this file you know I added the git ignore and this file is still here so we need to find a way to actually remove that file so in order to do that we're gonna go back to our uh, terminal application and I'm just gonna do an ls so that I can see the files again let me go ahead and clear just make everything a little easier to work with and now I'm gonna do a git specific command so I'm gonna do git rm which stands for remove dash dash cached and the dash dash cached will actually keep the local file but remove it from the repository now that's really important because like I said earlier just imagine this file has a lot of passwords in it well you don't want to just like totally delete that file right because if you do then you may lose all those passwords so we definitely want to keep that and at the end of this command I'm just gonna do the test uh, what was the name of that file terminal test terminal test dot text now if I commit it or press enter sorry let's look at the status so git status now you can see that it's uh, trying to delete this file so changes to be committed it's deleted terminal dot text so I'm just gonna do git uh, commit dash M removing text files from repo okay and now I'm gonna git push okay so that has now finished so if I go back to github again and refresh now you can see that file is gone but if I do an ls again press enter you can see that the file is still here so that uh, command can save you from a lot of pain down the road and it's really really um, important to know that one okay that's gonna do it for our git ignore files the next thing we're gonna look at is the readme file so the first question I want to answer is what is a readme file well the readme file is not as important to a repository as a dot get ignore file is but it can still be helpful to a team or to help others understand your project let's say that you are building a JavaScript framework that you are making publicly available so maybe it's a framework for a slider or something well one thing that you definitely need to consider is how will users be able to quickly understand and implement your framework well if you're thinking I can create a really detailed readme then you're absolutely correct a readme allows you to add additional information regarding your repository and its implementation now how you formulate your readme is completely up to you but I'm going to link to a template that someone has posted on github that you can actually use and I've got it right here and this just shows a really basic you know introduction to a readme uh, it's got information you know for like 
licensing, tests, uh, installation, motivation. You know, it's just sort of already got some of this information in here that you can use. So I'll be sure to link to that. And you may have noticed up top that it says readme.md. Well, the .md file extension actually stands for Markdown. So you may be wondering, what is Markdown? Well, Markdown is just a really simplified WYSIWYG, basically. Uh, you know, that's what it says here. And I'll be sure to link to this website as well so that you can take a look at it if you like. Uh, it's got a lot of great information in here as far as desktop apps and things like that that you, that you can use. Um, there's a couple of formatting guides linked to, you know, there's some really great stuff because I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over the formatting for Markdown. So the, the next thing I actually want to do is go through uh, just creating a readme for your repository. So just a really quick readme for, let's say, this repository. Now at the bottom here, you can see the GitHub knows we don't have a readme. And it says, help people interested in this repository understand your project by adding a readme. And then we've got this really convenient button. Just click on it. And it creates a readme.md file for us. As you can see, it's adding the, to the repository name up at the top. If I preview that, you can see it here. And as you can see, we've got this hashtag right here. And basically what that's specifying is that this is kind of like a header right so if I were to do for example hashtag hashtag test and then hashtag 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 test two and then preview this well, you can see that this is getting a little bit smaller and the uh, three hashtag one does not have an underline under it. And so that basically this is like a header one, header two, and a header three from HTML. And Markdown is kind of formatted in this way to where it's just trying to make it as easy as possible to create a really quick uh, text file for your users. Now that I've created it, you know, you can also put text in here. You can say something awesome about, whoops, my repo. And again, if we just preview it, you can see that the text is being added here. Again, I'm not going to sp spend a lot of time going over the formatting. Uh, if you want to learn more about the formatting, you can check out the, this uh, website that I'm going to link to in the description below. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that it is it, that GitHub is again saying, commit a new file, create the readme. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just go ahead and commit this new file. Now that I've committed a readme, GitHub it notices that and it adds the readme file right here. So now that when someone comes to my repository page, they actually see this readme right here. So that's what readmes are actually used for. You know, it's just giving people a little more information about your repository. One last point that I wanted to make is that I know I've spent uh, all of this tutorial inside of GitHub, but .gitignores and readme files are not specific to GitHub, right? It, they are specific to Git, but not GitHub. So you could actually do the exact same thing inside of Bitbucket, which I have open here. Git ignores are not as easy in Bitbucket, or at least I have not found a really easy way with all the templates and stuff that GitHub provides. But, you know, you can do the exact same stuff inside of Bitbucket. So it, it's also reading that we don't have a readme yet, and you can easily create one. Now, they do make the readme creation a little bit easier. So as you can see here, we've got a lot more information inside of this uh, readme file. And if I preview it, you can see that it's, you know, creating a bulleted list and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, it's a little bit weird because GitHub seems to be way better with Git ignores than Bitbucket is, but Bitbucket seems to be way better with readme. So, um, you know, it's a little bit odd, but that's okay. So that's going to do it for this tutorial. Just again, going over Git ignore and readme files really quickly. I hope you learned something new about Git usage. As always, thanks for watching. Drop us a like and don't forget to subscribe.